Hey everybody, Joshua here from the Jubilee Project. I wanted to take a couple minutes today to talk to you about two things. One of them is part quality, uh, print quality, sorry. And the other one is uh, machined parts that you can now actually pick up as uh, an upgrade to the original design. Okay, so for the first of the three models that I wanted to show you today, is the Reaction Diffusion Cat by Nervous System. This is original size, it's 0.2 millimeter layer height, and I must say, this is a really good stress test for a machine. Um, I would say because of all these quick starts and uh, stops and restarts, this is a great way to really see whether or not your machine is capable of printing things at high quality. I would say this is a pretty good starting point. Um, but don't be discouraged because there's a lot of tuning that you might need to do in order to actually get the starts and finishes coming out a little bit more cleanly. Uh, mechanically wise, I would say that uh, this, this came off of a pretty good printer uh, and what's really needed at this point is tuning the filaments. So this is a great stress test. Uh, number two out of three is a kind of an example of when your prints are a little bit more dialed in, or when your filaments are more dialed in. This is the Moai Head by Mark 3D 3D on Thingiverse. And I, the idea is, again, 0.2 millimeter layer heights, but the marble is very nicely dialed in. Um, and to contrast that, the silky gold is actually not quite as nicely dialed in. And as a result, you can kind of see that you can still see some of those layer artifacts um, between layers. Um, that said, um, I think this is a, a great example of really playing with the filament settings and getting something that looks really, really nice. Um, okay, and then finally, the last one is the two-color Julia vase by Mark Three or by Vertox on Thingiverse. So uh, again, same idea. This is kind of like uh, Kintsugi inspired, although I must say it's a little bit too much gold for my taste. Um, that said, again, same concept here where the uh, marble is pretty nicely dialed in while the gold still needs a little bit of work. That said, I would say combined among the three of them, I would say Jubilee is really capable of doing pretty darn good prints at this point. And mechanically, the machine's there. Um, Filament-wise, might, you might need to play with some of the settings a little bit more before you're good to go. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was machined upgrades. So first off, I would just want to say thank you to everybody who's been uh, kind of active on the internet, kind of, uh, and also in real life, actually going out there and supporting the project and building a Jubilee in real life and, and purchasing parts from the various vendors. This is one of the first upgrades, I would say, where uh, from the original design, and it really makes the machine shine. So this is the machined metal crossbar from Mandala Roseworks. It's machined aluminum, and it is very nicely put together, I must say. Um, the other nice thing about this too is that it's quite stiff. I did some deflection uh, stress testing in uh, Fusion 360, and with a two kilogram load acting on the center, you get about 0.15 millimeters of deflection without the uh, MGN 12 rail bolted onto it. So as is, 0.15 millimeters of deflection with two kilograms by itself is pretty good. Uh, when you bolt the rail on top of that, it's going to be pretty rock solid. Um, yeah, so this kind of upgrade is only really possible because there are people out there who are building Jubilees, who are excited about the project, and who are willing to spend a little bit of money to build their own. So uh, thank you to everyone because uh, this is not something that would be possible if I were just building it on my own. It would just be too expensive. Uh, so thank you to everyone. And then um, one last thing I wanted to showcase is that our parts are... Uh, they have part numbers now in some cases. Um, this is a machine part example. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to see, but you're gonna have to trust, take my word on it. There we go. You're gonna take my word on it that it's actually there. The idea here is that we came up with a part numbering scheme, uh, kind of in between on Discord and over GitHub issues. Uh, and the idea here was that I wanted people to really get a sense of what they have in their hands physically when they're building it. The, the project changes every once in a while, ever so slightly, and so as a result, I want to make sure that if we make changes to the main project on GitHub, that you know what you have and you know what the differences are. And the easiest way to do that is to embed part numbers. So it's kind of a matter of traceability. It's also a matter of knowing, like specificity, knowing what you have versus what's in the project uh, on the internet in the latest version. Yeah, so that's about it for today. So thanks again for tuning in and stay tuned. 
uh, thank you again for, uh, for all the kind words on, I suppose, Reddit and all sorts of different places. And I look forward to telling you a few more good things in the future. All right, cheers, everyone. Bye.